Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Neha Taneja, your educator and mentor for PSM. So today's topic is concept of disease. Now, in concept of disease, you at least can aim for one to two MCQs in your exams. Okay? So you should always, whenever you start reading about a topic, you should always try to see ke say, like how many MCQs can we target from this topic. So at least one definitely, but sometimes can go to uh, uh, two MCQs as well. So now the important thing is, we've already read concept of health. Now we are going to talk about concept of disease. So why do diseases happen? So your first topic over here is theories of, yeah, your first topic over here is theories of disease causation. So why are diseases happening? Now, the first theory, now uh, many times people tell us that, you know, uh, right now your uh, your time is not right, okay? You must have been told that too as well, okay? So the first theory is that disease is happening due to bad clouds, okay? So that is miasma theory. This is theory number one, okay? Miasma theory, which says that disease happens due to All right, disease happens due to bad clouds. Ye si theory hai? Which theory is this? This is miasma theory, which was given by a scientist, William Furr. Okay, so this is point number two. First theory, disease happens due to bad clouds, given by William Furr. Okay, let's move to the next theory. Yeah, next theory of disease causation is you know, when we don't have any answer, we just say that it happened because of no reason. Yes. So theory of disease causation made the second theory is theory of spontaneous generation. Okay, theory of spontaneous generation. Theory of spontaneous generation, what does it mean? That disease happens on its own. Okay, and who gave this theory? A very important person who gave this theory. This theory was given by Aristotle. Okay. So first was disease happens due to bad clouds, miasma theory given by William Furr. The second one is theory of spontaneous generation, which means disease is happening on its own given by Aristotle. Then we have a very important theory, which is represented by an image over here. In this image, if you look at this image, what is the most striking feature that you can see over here is this letter, this, this word germs. So, what is the third theory, guys? The third theory is the germ theory of disease, okay? And this germ theory of disease was given by a very famous person known as Louis Pasteur, okay? So, this theory was given by Louis Pasteur, okay? All right, now... One important point for Louis Pasteur is that he gave the germ theory and one point you will also study in the topic of vaccination that Louis Pasteur, which I'm just going to add it here as well for you, that Louis Pasteur has coined the term, okay, Louis Pasteur coined the term vaccine also. This is just a golden point which I am adding over here so that when you revise at the same point you have two important work of done by Louis Pasteur. Okay, So one is he gave the germ theory of disease and he also coined the term uh, vaccine. So disease is happening due to the presence of germs. Okay? What is the next theory? The first, fourth theory. Now if you look at this image you can get this as an image based question mostly. Theories of disease causation come as an image based question. Okay. So now if you look at this theory, you can see that in the center I've written CHD, okay, heart diseases. Now there are so many factors responsible for heart diseases, hereditary, high fat diet, sedentary lifestyle, smoking, obesity, hypertension. So all these are causes for 
the occurrence of heart disease. So what is this theory number four? From the image itself, it's a theory of multifactorial causation. Okay. So let's put it down. What is the fourth theory? The fourth theory is theory of multifactorial causation. Now you can see over here there are so many causes for CHD. So theory of multifactorial causation. Now since the name goes multifactorial causation, it is telling us about the possible causes of a disease, possible etiologies. Okay? So this is a buzzword which theory tells us about possible etiologies. Etiologies means causes. So which theory tells us about possible etiologies of a disease guys? So that is theory of multifactorial causation. Okay. Now who gave this theory of multifactorial causation? Another important person gave this theory of multifactorial causation. His name was Peten Koffer. Okay. So two points from this theory you have to remember. One of course you could get to identify the image. Then you can get to ask, like you could get in the exams who gave this theory, Pete and Koffer. And next point is that it is telling us about the possible etiologies of a disease. Take it. So these are the possible causes. Now next was a theory which told us about how these causes are interacting with each other to form a, to lead to the occurrence of a disease. Take it. So yeah, next theory over here, theory number five, if you see this, Okay, you can see this image where you can see that we are trying to find out the reasons for MI, myocardial infarction. Now, myocardial infarction has so many causes, but how are these causes interacting with each other? Okay, so the next theory is our theory of very important web of causation. Okay, the theory is web of causation. Now, we all know just like a spider's web, okay. There are different ways in which these possible causes can interact and lead to the occurrence of a disease. So web of causation, everybody is telling us about the possible modes of transmission of a disease. Okay? How the possible, how, what are the possible ways by which a disease can occur. So this is telling us about possible modes of transmission. Who gave the web of causation? Now it's a web. So we need at least two people to frame this theory. So who were they? McMohan and Pug. Okay. McMohan and Pug gave this web of causation theory. Okay. So this is telling us about the possible modes of transmission of a disease. Next, a very famous thing is epidemiological triad, okay. Epidemiological triad tells us how the agent agent, host and environment are interacting, okay. So, it is not just interacting. Epidemiological triad is the interaction and interdependence of agent host and environment, okay? So, you need to remember both these terminologies, both these terms, epidemiological triad is interaction and Okay. Interaction and interdependence of agent, host and environment. Okay. This was the sixth theory. Alright. That see, in, for any disease to occur, we should have an agent and we should have a host. And the disease is reaching from the agent to the host. So, there is an environment in between. Okay. So, whenever there is a, you can consider it like a swing. Okay. Here is the agent. Here is the host. The fulcrum here could be the environment. Whenever there is a balance between all the three things, agent, host, environment, the disease will not occur. Whenever this balance gets disturbed, the disease can occur. So that is epidemiological triad. Okay. Next came epidemiological triangle. It was the same as triad, but what we did in triangle guys, 
okay so if this is agent host and environment what is the one thing that we did in triangle guys here we added what is known as time okay we added the concept of time to this epidemiological triangle now time here means we've started considering the incubation period of a disease the latent period of a disease all of those things okay so we added time in between this is epidemiological triangle here also we are talking about interaction and interdependence also only between agent host and environment considering time as a factor also okay so this is the seventh next theory was a slightly uh, bigger version of these theories which was advanced model of triangle of epidemiology now what was why are we calling it as advanced how is it different from epidemiological triad or triangle now in both triad and triangle we saw agent okay now it's not always an agent which will cause a disease okay there are so many factors in our life responsible for disease okay our lifestyle stress our dietary habits so many things so, so what happened we proposed that agent should be replaced by what causative factors and causative factors everybody is going to include everything okay yahan pe host hai and here environment so causative factors would include everything not just the agent other lifestyle and behavioral factors also so at mcq comes that in advanced triangle of uh, epidemiology what is done it's a very famous mcq guys agent is replaced by causative factor okay